All right, this video is going to be an introduction to vectors. A vector is just a directed line segment. It's going to have this initial point, right? O, I'm calling it here. And it's a line segment that goes out here to this arrow, and this is going to be called the terminal point. Okay, so it's going from the initial point to the terminal point. This arrow does not mean that it's going on forever. Its length is just from 0 to P. Okay, so some notation we use would be, well, this would be vector OP. So we would use OP, and we'd put this little half vector thing up above it. And the reason why we write that is because, well, we can't really boldface it very easily when we're writing on paper or on the board or whatever. In your, in your textbooks or, um, you know, on some websites or whatnot, you can actually get it bold, and so vectors will be in boldface. But since we can't do that here, so we'll be using this half um, vector uh, notation thing as just to represent, all right, this is a vector. Okay. Now, vectors, notice they have um, a length, right? Because the length is from 0 to P, right? It ends at P's terminal point. That's called the magnitude. The length of a vector is called the magnitude. Vectors also have a direction, right? Depending on which way they go. They can go up, they can go down, they can go right, left, I mean, they can go in all kinds of directions, right? So, so a vector has a magnitude and a direction. Uh, we'll talk more about that uh, in a minute. All right, so now let's look at these two vectors, A and B down here. They have the same magnitude, so the same length, and they go in the same direction. So these vectors we would say are equal. Vector A and vector B are equal because they have the same magnitude in the same direction. In order for vectors, two vectors to be equal, they have to have the same magnitude and same direction. So like on this one, C and D, they have the same magnitude, but they don't have the same direction, so therefore they are not equal vectors. Okay? All right. Make a little note here, got some notation. The magnitude of a vector u is written, these double vertical bars of um, u, right? Or um, just one set of, of vertical bars with the u in there. This almost looks like the absolute value situation, but it's not absolute value. It, it actually, because this is a vector, not a number inside here, it actually means we want the length, the magnitude of the vector. How long is it? Some books use uh, the notation with the single um, vertical bars. Other books, other instructors use the double uh, vertical bars. I'm going to stick with the double vertical bars here uh, to represent the magnitude of a vector. Okay. All right, so now let's talk about what's called a scalar product. All right, so if we've got, um, this is u, and then this vector here, it has the same direction as u, but see, it's, it's like twice as long, right? Its magnitude is twice as long. This is actually 2u. That's how that would be, right? Whereas this one right here was about as half as long as our original there. It would be 1 half u. Everybody see that? And if it goes the opposite direction, so it's got the same magnitude, um, just in the opposite direction, this would be negative u. All right, so uh, this is called a scalar multiplication because you're multiplying the original vector by some scalar number. And remember, a scalar number is just some real number. Okay, so here would be multiplied by 2, here by a half, and here by negative 1. All right, so now let's talk about adding vectors geometrically. All right, so if you want to add vectors a and b together uh, geometrically, uh, then we take the initial point of b and put it on the terminal point of a. You can move vectors around everywhere, just as long as it's the same magnitude in the same direction, it doesn't matter where you put them. Right? So we're just going to put the initial point of b onto the terminal point of a, and so then to get the, the resultant of a plus b, we go from the initial point of A all the way out to the terminal point of B. That right there. That's called the resultant vector, and that would be the resultant vector A plus B. And then say we had negative B instead, so it's A and negative B. Then from the initial point of A to the terminal point of B, right, then that would be A plus negative B and simply a plus negative b is the same thing as a minus b. So sort of like subtracting vectors now, right? So this that's just geometrically if we needed to add or subtract vectors. You can move them around to, to get that set up. 
All right, so now let's move vectors to the rectangular coordinate system. All right, so you get your x and y axis. You've got a vector starting at the, the initial points at the origin. It goes out here to AB. Okay, so make a little note. A vector with the initial point at the origin and the terminal point at AB is written in this notation. Right, everybody see this? Right there. Now, what, the, what does that really mean? Well, that means that geometrically, a vector is a directed line segment, but algebraically, it is an ordered pair, right? It's really what 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 uh, what it's saying, and that's actually going to make things nice for us when we um, start adding, subtracting, and whatnot um, algebraically. It's just it's pretty easy to do uh, algebraically. All right, so a couple more notes: the magnitude or the length of a vector u. So we're gonna let's call this up here. Let's call this u. If that's vector u, then the magnitude or length of a vector u, which is equal to ab, right, uh, is given by the magnitude of u equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. Everybody see that? If you want this length right here, right, well, this is just a right triangle, right? If you draw it down, make a little right triangle, then Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared, square root of that is equal to that length of the hypotenuse. So that's really all that we've got going on here, right? So if you've got a vector, uh, then the magnitude of that vector is the square root of a squared plus b squared. A is called the horizontal component of the vector, and B is called the vertical component of the vector. And so to find um, the magnitude, you just square the horizontal component plus square the vertical component, add those two things together, take the square root of that. It's just the Pythagorean theorem. Don't make it any more difficult than that. And then if this is the angle theta here, that's the direction angle. That's telling you the direction of your, of your vector. So the direction angle satisfies tangent theta equals B over A, right? That's just from opposite over adjacent. And of course, A can't be zero. All right, so let's, let's try an example. All right, so find the magnitude and the direction angle for our vector is U, which equals negative 3, 4. All right, so what quadrant is your vector in? Well, if the X part is negative and the Y part is positive, then we're in quadrant 2, All right? Quadrant 2. That's going to be important to know in a minute. All right, so let's do magnitude first. All right, so magnitude equals the square root of negative 3 squared, which is 9, plus 4 squared, which is 16, which is the square root of 25, which equals 5. So the magnitude of this vector is 5, you know, whatever unit you're playing with. Now the direction angle. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is use the reference angle idea. Remember the reference angle idea from trig? All right, so instead of worrying that it's in quadrant two at the moment, I'm going to find the angle that's in quadrant one and then figure out what the angle then has to be in quadrant two using the reference angle idea. Okay, so I'm going to find the tangent of theta hat. It's called theta hat. And really why I'm doing that is, well, I want everything to be positive. So I'm just going to write this as four over three. Positive four over positive three, that's going to give me an angle that is in quadrant one. This implies that theta hat is about equal to 53.1301 degrees. But that's the reference angle. So theta is equal to 180 degrees minus 53. 0.1301 degrees. Everybody understand why we're subtracting it from 180 degrees? Because we're in quadrant 2, right? So subtract the reference angle from 180, and you're going to get 126.8699 degrees. And that is your direction angle. Everybody see how I use the reference angle idea there? Okay. All right, so that's it for the introduction of um, vectors. Uh, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.